On today's show, all fishing trips are good, of course. Hi there. But some are very special when your fishing partner is a boy named Zach. We're going to fish together a little bit? And later, eel pout. It's the fish that ice anglers love to hate. But wait, <laughs> members of the eel pout fan club have a different idea. You'll be surprised. Isn't that cool? It's that time of year again, time for the Minnesota Bound Live Eagle Cam, a daily peek into the life and times of a pair of Minnesota bald eagles. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. As you can see, I'm thinking about fishing. Don't know what Raven's thinking about, probably food. But our first story is about fishing. A fishing trip I took this past winter with a young man named Zach. It was a very special fishing trip for many reasons. Truth be told, fishing is a lot like life itself. We hope for a good bite. Last time when I was down here. We hope for a good life. I just mostly ate candy and caught fish. Zach Gustafson from Renville, Minnesota already knows a lot about fishing. You only have a little sp space to catch a fish. And even more about life. I think I may have just saw one. Zach is 10 years old. Zach's sister, Ella. Fishy, fishy in the brook. She knows about fishing in life, too. What if you put a minnow on it? Ella is eight. When Ella was born, when she was six days old, we received um, on her newborn screening that she had cystic fibrosis. And we had no idea what it was. Cystic fibrosis is a genetically fatal disease. There is no cure. Even though it was a diagnosis we were getting for Ella, we quickly realized that's why Zach had been sick for two and a half years of his life. Diagnosis, Zach too had cystic fibrosis. They know what CF is. And they know what's going on. Yeah, and we, and we don't live in the gloom and doom, but that is, um, that is the disease. Yeah, and I think it's their strength that keeps us strong. Two older Gustafson children, Haley 14 and Aiden 12, are CF carriers, but not infected. I think it's brought us closer together, huh? But on this chilly day on Candy Ojai Lake in western Minnesota, this is so, I'm so happy you made it out here. <laughs> yes. Mom was keeping a little fishing secret. He watches, seriously, watches Minnesota Every boat every week really? and he records episodes so when he's doing his treatment he watches can you open it hey there i'm ron how's the fishing Hunter from Minnesota Bound. Yeah, how'd you know that, bud? Because I watch. Do you? We're gonna fish together a little bit? Now look down there. Look, at, you can see the bottom. And then you could actually maybe see a fish swimming by. What were you just telling me, Ella? You catch the bigger fish than your brother? Uh, well, I caught a little northern, and then I um, caught a little perch, but a northern was on it. Uh, Come on then in. Then another secret, knocking on the ice house door. What's going on in here? Flying in from Houston, Greg Mueller. He's gonna give me that look. <laughs> Member of the famed Acrodunk team of basket dunking entertainers. When I came up three years ago and I met Zach and Ella, I fell in love with those kids. And I have such a good bond with them and a special relationship that we talk, you know, a few times a week. They're like my kids, like I love them. Back in the ice castle. Oh Who's that? More fishing experts arrived from the NBA? Oh, oh, oh. Of course, this unusual oh, assortment of fishing pros didn't just appear on the frozen ice cape. Bill Neubauer, founder of the Tim Orth Foundation, explains. It's a nonprofit organization uh, helping children. We do what we can, and we give everything that we raise away. 
You know, last year I, I took a couple of kids that we helped ice fishing for the first time and they fell in love with it. They forget about what they have for the day and catch some fish. To help with the ice fishing for kids idea, Jeff Drexler, owner of Ice Castles, donated one of his luxury fish houses to the foundation. We've done well and we like to give back. Meanwhile, still waiting for a bite. Mendel's working good, isn't he? Kind of want to put on two, because that always helps. Sometimes it does. When he's fishing, Zach's smile disguises his rugged path through life. You know about his cystic fibrosis. You don't know about his cancer. Zach had a little cough, and we uh, mentioned it to the doctor. And he said, let's just do a CT scan. And they kept saying over and over, it is not lung cancer, don't worry, it's fine. It was about a week later, the doctor called me and said, I, I can't believe this, no one can believe this, but it is adenocarcinoma, Zachary has lung cancer. Late in 2015, after three surgeries on his lungs, doctors said Zach appeared to be cancer free. <laughs> Best surprise ever. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think about today to see all your basketball buddies in there? Yeah, it was fun and surprising. He's a powerhouse. He's a fighter. He's resilient. And all he wants to do is fish. <laughs> <laughs> and be a kid. <laughs> and be a 10 year old kid. Yeah. Up next, a fishing trip to catch eel pout, led by a leader of pout scouts. To catch what? Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Rapala Ice Force, Border View Lodge, and by Star Bank. Coming up, the fish that ice anglers used to hate is the eel pout. But that's sort of changing as folks discover the eel pout's not only fun to catch, but pretty good eating too. Travis Frank has the story. On a cold February day, back in 1979, anglers gathered on the ice of Leech Lake to celebrate a fish with many names. That day, the eel pout festival was born. Yeah. For three days every winter, eel pout takes center stage. Then the roar settles, ice houses disappear, and eel pout become an afterthought once again. Except here. Eel pout. Burbot. Mariah. Ling. Lawyer. Lingcod. Loda Loda. You know your pout well. I prefer burbot. Whatever they call it, Jason Rylander has become their number one fan. His friends call him the bearded pout whisperer, and he's got the photos to prove it. <laughs> what do you call this guy? That is the pout angel. This is a pout delicacy right here. Stinky garlic jig head with shiners covered in fur, basically. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know how else to describe it, but... Ugh. I think they look super neat. They're tigers. They look like tigers to me. They're green, the whites, the yellows. I want a camouflage pattern suit made of burbot. You fish them at night. You know, they, they're creepy looking, I think, to a lot of people. They're, they're an eel, snake-like, and scared of them. As the sun goes down, the hunt for pout Dinner time. begins. Jason's handmade pout angel calls them in. Isn't technology sweet? Look at that. Here he is. He just came out of nowhere. OK, does he got it? They come in hot. <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Don't you want a camouflage jacket like that for duck hunting? I think so. <laughs> this is the part that give this thing a bad name right there. It's that tail that gives them a bad rap. Because they wrap around your arm. 
That's the classic, and I can honestly say I've maybe had two burbot wrap around my arm. Coat. Back you go, little man. <laughs> oh, there it is. I know. Awesome. <laughs> One just swam to the camera. You are dialed in over there. Is he tugging good? For me, it's definitely the tug. The fight is phenomenal. Nice. Who doesn't like reeling in 10 pound fish? You've got the single barbell, and that's what they're using to pick up scent. And they don't have any teeth, like a bass. You know, that big belly, and then that eel-like tail. A freshwater member of the cod family, eel pout need deep, cold water to survive. They get more active the colder they get. Late winter nights trigger them to move shallow, where they school up to spawn. I typically will start targeting them in mid-February. You know, they spawn under the ice, roughly mid-March. Look at that thing go. That's why I love it. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> look at that. Oh my goodness. For decades, eel pelt were tossed on a frozen ice, considered a rough fish, left for waste. Got him. But not here. In this house, they've become Minnesota's top winter prize. Lobster boil, seven ups easy. Freshly caught, freshly served. Mm. Just a pout perfect. More pun. <laughs> More pun. <laughs> Closed captioning from Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Lake of the Woods Tourism. Coming up, I'm proud to announce our Minnesota Bound Live Eagle Cam is up and running. This is your chance to take a sneak peek into the lives of our national emblem. In 1782, when Congress chose the bald eagle as America's national emblem, who would guess that more than two centuries later, we'd be addicted to watching real eagles live on a computer screen. Call it nature raw. The camera's bird's eye view of the nest sometimes show what's on the menu, fishy fish or furry critters. Eventually eggs hatch and baby eagles then occupy their stick home, looking oh so fragile and helpless. Speaking of helpless, high drama took place during the nesting season of 2012 when one eaglet fell out of the nest and perished, while a second suffered a leg injury. Should we let nature take its course? Viewers who had named the young bird Harmon said no. So to the rescue came a crew from the Raptor Center at the University of Minnesota. Hey buddy, what you got there? You got a whole mess of stuff here. Okay, my friend. Yeah, I know that was a rough ride, but it's okay. It's okay. Hopefully a couple of days at the spa and some good food and clean them up to get the maggots off. We will have a kid that looks altogether different. Comfy spot. Quickly, the raptor crew fixed the wing and returned Harmon to the nest. But then the question was, would the parents return? After 24 hours and no sign of mom and pop eagle, all hope was fading. When the parents returned and reunited with their lone surviving young. And they lived happily ever after. But the story doesn't end there because Minnesota Bound will again bring you the life and times of a bald eagle family, thanks to Mark Wegscheid from Broadband Corporation. This is a mount we made to, that the camera will go in. We haven't had this before. So we're gonna load all this up into the boom and head up. 
head up to an eagle's nest to mount, shall we say, a spy camera. What we'll do is we have the old equipment that we need to take down, which is a mic box and the old camera. We're going to take the log that we made as a housing for the camera, and we'll mount that over the top of the, the new camera. So what lies ahead for the Minnesota Bound Eagle Camp? Only nature knows. To find out, simply click on mnbound.com. What the eagles don't know is millions of us, once again, will be watching nature's own eagle soap opera. This week on our Minnesota Bound Classic, a spring moment to remember the spring migration of sandhill cranes, birds en route north to, well, even Siberia. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut. Track your boats. And by Totem Resorts. Time now for our Minnesota Bond Classic, and this one is very special to me because it is one of the most moving nature stories I've ever been witness to, and that is the migration of sandhill cranes on the Platte River in central Nebraska. When spring sunrises come to Nebraska's Platte River, the moment is a sight to behold. Sandhill cranes take to the air. A sea of skinny legs and six-foot wings. Tens of thousands. The air itself is full too, full of the dangest sound you've ever heard. They tell me that the sandhill crane has the loudest voice of all bird species, and it has to do with their long neck. And when you hear a hundred thousand of them, it's a magical sound. The Platte River is one of the most powerful places I've ever been in my life. Sandhills also are one of the oldest birds on Earth, almost prehistoric, scientists say. They've been coming to the Platte River every spring for not hundreds, but millions of years. In my mind, what happens here is the cranes are on their way north and they need a place to be able to sit down and get all the energy they need to be able to complete their migration. From mid-February to early April, the migrating cranes pause along a short but key 80-mile stretch of the river near Kearney, Nebraska. Their next northbound stop are nesting grounds as far away as the Arctic and Siberia. For Sandhills, this is a serious business trip, the business of courtship dances to find a mate. The dancing is an expression of several things. First of all, it's always a part of the mating ritual between a male and female crane. It's a really important part, and it's an absolutely stunning thing to watch. These birds have been coming through this area for three million years, and so it's a tremendous story, but what has happened is there's a high demand for water, certainly throughout the, the prairie here. And when the water levels are siphoned off for very valuable uh, needs like irrigation of crops, man's use of water, it also takes away from the cranes. The Platte is like a refuge. At nightfall, cranes return to the river to roost in the sandy shallows to be safe from predators. When all those birds came thundering in and the swirls that we saw, it was emotional, it moves you. And I think it's part of mankind. It's something that our ancestors have felt, it's something that the natives have felt, and it's something that we can still witness in this modern era. They're tough, they, they're primitive looking birds and yet they're very smart birds, so they seem to have all the tools to survive. And survive they must. Spring on the Platte just wouldn't be the same, of course. But if we somehow lose to history this awesome spectacle of sand hills, if our dawns and dusks become silent, we would possibly be sadder than we've ever been before. Never get tired of that one. And by the way, you can go see it yourself. It happens every March and early April on the Platte River. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sher, and of course, always the star of the show, 
the Lancy today is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.